Thanks for taking a minute to check out this video preview. I want to take some time to explain what the sequence of this intervention is, as well as what the daily routine looks like. This is designed to be able to be used from the beginning of the school year to the end of the school year. It covers both addition and subtraction without regrouping, as well as addition and subtraction with regrouping. You'll also notice that there are a couple of weeks of mixed addition and subtraction because I feel it's important for students to not just get in the habit of, oh, this week is addition, we should add, or this week is subtraction, we should sub subtract. I think it's important for students to get in the habit of checking those symbols and I also go back and forth between addition and subtraction, addition and subtraction, because sometimes my students get really great at addition, and then we move to subtraction. They get really great at subtraction, and when we spiral back here, it's like we've never done addition before. So I think it's important to go back and forth, back and forth throughout the school year. As far as the daily routine goes, each day, if you were just flipping through the book, looks very, very similar. And there are subtle differences, but overall, each day is very, very similar. So you'll begin each day by completing eight computation problems. Um, for my math groups, I only have about 20 minutes with my students, and that's including transition time. So sometimes we might get 15 minutes of work time. So what I usually do is I set a timer. Usually I'm wearing an Apple Watch and I say, hey Siri, set a timer for 10 minutes. And we work through as many problems of these as we can in 10 minutes. Sometimes we might make it through seven or eight of them. Other times, if it's something that's more difficult or we're just introducing something, we might only make it to number three or four. But either way, when Siri says stop, we stop. Then we move to the right side of the page. On the right side of the page, every single day, you'll find a graphing problem, three clocks for telling time, and two different groups of money for counting. The graph every single day is the exact same graph. So like for this particular week, it says, what is your favorite day of the week? Or what was the favorite day of the week? And there's a graph, the same data all week long. On day one, it'll say which had the most votes. We'll see which had the most votes which had the least votes. How many students voted all together? Well, if your students can or are working on this type of computation, they can do 12 plus 16 plus eight. They just have to be taught what to do with that information. A lot of times when we take high stakes tests or uh, school-wide or district-wide assessments, my kids are getting these wrong or they were getting them wrong and it's like, oh, come on guys, I know you could do the computation, but they just don't know what to do with words and reading the chart. On day four, it says, how many students voted for Saturday over Sunday? So we would be working on subtracting. How many students voted for this over this? And on Friday, it's usually a problem with and. How many voted for Friday and Sunday? So we would be adding. So I really think that my students made a lot of progress once they were taught how to read the chart and what to do with those words. Each day, you'll see that there is a clock with time to the nearest hour, the nearest half hour, and to the nearest five minutes. So some of my students get this really easily. They, they have a good understanding of that, but maybe to the nearest five minutes is difficult. Either way, I like to work with all of these all year long. Then for groups of money, we start out, this is just week one, so we start out pretty simply counting by 25s, which is still a, a challenge, still something to learn. And near the end of the year, we're working more on counting two types of coins. So maybe have two quarters and two dimes or two quarters and a penny afterwards to get used to counting not just quarters or not just nickels, but counting different types of coins. Usually the same two coins are used all week so that we can kind of get used to counting by 25s or 10s or by fives and ones. Um, that way you're kind of doing the same thing and hitting that really hard for a week. So let me know if you have any questions about this intervention or how to use it in your